KC's Audio Vault. Ian Thornley. January 28th, 2010. Ian, where are you phoning from today? Uh, we just pulled into Calgary. It's actually, uh, it's a beautiful day, too. It's the first one we've seen since we've been out. Yeah, has it been snowing and blowing when you're on the road? Not so much that, just sort of gray and dreary, and, and uh, we just came down from Grand Prairie, and it was like minus 30 or something ridiculous. Well, well when you hit uh, Winnipeg on Monday, I think you're going to get the the minus 30 weather back. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's been sunny for the past few days, but uh, about minus 30. Well, you know, it is Canada in the winter, so. How do you guys uh, travel across the country? you have a kick-ass bus? Uh, <laughs> We have a bus. I don't know if I'd call it kick ass. We've been complaining about it since we got in it. It's tough to remind yourself every once in a while that you could be in a van and, you know. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bus. You know, it's got bunks and uh, heat sometimes even. Do you get one of the, uh, one of the crew to drive it? Uh, no, no, no. There's a, it, there's a driver that you hire. So he'll get us from A to B and then he'll sleep while we're, uh, while we're parked. It's a whole legal thing so that uh, everybody can drink and carry on while he's driving. Did you ever work as a as a roadie in your younger days? No, 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 it was never, uh, I never aspired to try that path. Man, it's hard work for these guys from the time they wake till you know, they shut her down. They're, they're pretty much full steam ahead. And I, you know, as a musician, I always kind of dread days off. I mean, it's nice to rest your throat and everything, but I'm like, well, what do I do, you know? It's more hard work than I think I, I would be capable of. How did you make your money before music came along? Oh, let's see. When I was uh, when I was in, in my teens, my summer jobs were uh, I'd work at the, there's a studio in Toronto called Sounds Interchange, and I was one of the uh, they called us the campers um, because uh, I guess if you knew somebody in the studio, then you'd basically work in the dub room making dubs. Back in those days, we'd uh, record all the all the radio commercials there, and then we'd have to make dubs and send them off to the factory one year which was uh interesting you know it was always sort of summer jobs i never really i tried construction when i was in new york that was hard work and definitely not something that uh someone like me is cut out for <laughs> like in the early days when it was when we were really broke i'd try anything for a little while just to get enough money to get to the next week back at the studio the the radio station where they the carts like the radio eight track carts? Uh, no, no, no. They were uh, they were little spools of uh, quarter inch tape, just with thirty uh, second radio spots on them. Do you do you try and keep everything analog, or you've uh, transitioned into the digital age? Um, no, it's uh, you know what it's it's actually more difficult and more expensive to do that. I would love to because personally, I I prefer the sound and the vibe you get from recording on it on tape. You know, there are advancements all the time in the digital world, but it's strange that they're trying as hard as they can to make things sound like the way they were. It's just one of those, you can call it a necessary evil, but it's also, I mean, the way Pro Tools and all that stuff works, it's, it's wonderful for editing. If you're like, well, I think that this course would, would work better if it was doubled here, and then you just, you know, click and drag, and, and there it is. And, I'm, you know, it never ceases to amaze me. The things you can do, because I still operate Pro Tools at home, like like a tape machine. I'm going to record, and then I start playing. You know, I'm a bit of a a bit of a throwback that way. <laughs> I call myself a Renaissance man, but I think it just means I'm lazy. Are you uh, excited at all for the uh, for the Olympics to start? Um, it hasn't really registered, you know, because it, it's, it's on the other side of the country for me, and uh, I'm not a big fan of the winter sports. As I said, I'm not really a big fan of winter itself. <laughs> I always seem to get sick and, and, and anything wintry reminds me of being sick so no <laughs> but yeah I mean I think it's great for it's great for Canada and all that I mean, it's great for Van and uh, and hopefully we get a get a whack of medals and spank some other countries and sports that we should be calling our own yeah I'm looking forward to like the hockey stuff for sure do you follow many other sports are you going to watch the uh, uh, Super Bowl I guess that's a couple Sundays from now um, yeah, see, it's hard for me to get really into any particular sport because I'd like to be really passionate about a team, and, uh, we don't really have any that are doing particularly well in Toronto. And, and when I was living in Boston, it was kind of the same thing. Cheer for the underdog, sure, but that gets a little tired. You have to really be a, a sort of bred fan, you know? <clears throat> I always tell people that I bleed blue and I'll be a Leafs fan till I die, but, uh, it's not like I follow every 
game or could tell you who all the players are. And as far as the Super Bowl goes, I kind of I, like who's who's doing the halftime show this year. Uh, the Who. There we go. So I'll watch that for sure. I love the Who. Who's in the Super Bowl? Oh, <laughs> damned if I know. You're asking the wrong guy. So there you go. See, I don't. I have no idea. But if the Who's on it, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> if there's beer and chicken wings, count us in. There you go, man. I see. There's a you have an unreleased song provide that's going to be soon made available as a charity single. What what's the cause for this? Um, that's for spread the net. They're concentrating mainly on on malaria in Africa. There's uh, I guess it's transmitted primarily by the mosquitoes in the hospitals where they don't have bed nets. So when the kids get sick and they're staying in the hospitals, the mosquitoes are flying around and getting all the kids sicker and killing them. So it just seemed that a friend of mine, Belinda, just uh, sort of hit me to the cause of what she was getting involved in. And I, I'm pretty much a musician through and through. And I'm like, well, what can I do? Like, if I can offer something that, that I do to help, absolutely, I'm in. I just sort of said, well, can I write a song for it? And she said, that'd be wonderful. And I said, I come up with an idea while we were having a conversation. And then I recorded the song for Spread the Net. And that was it. That was a while ago now. And there's been some difficulty as far as... Because I, I figured it would be easy enough to just write a song for charity and give it to the charity, and then they could use it, you know, however they wanted. But, of course, people get in the middle of that, and everybody thinks you're trying to pull a fast one. And I'm like, no, 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 This doesn't involve you, the publishers, or, or anyone else. This involves me and, and the charity. Are you pretty much sick of the uh, bureaucracy that you have to deal with in the music industry? Well, I, I think, yeah, I think it's starting to run over a bit, you know. Um because I've been doing it a while, and I've always said and sort of lived by the creed that, man, I'm, I'm a musician, I don't care about the business, you know, and it's it's just sort of, it's a dumb way to do things, especially when you're, you know, sort of in that middle ground where you don't have an island yet, you know, um, and, and it's good to know about your business, and it just seems the more I learn, the more, the less I want to do music as a, as a career. But, uh, yeah, it does kind of seem petty and... There's an eternal battle between art and commerce, certainly, when you're trying to make a living off of off of doing it. But uh, I do get a little pissed off sometimes at how everybody wants to take their cut when it has nothing to do with them. And just the way people get screwed is, is, is always a bit of a shock, and it does make me angry every now and then. Are you going to be uh, making it home for, for Valentine's Day? Um, actually, I, Sean, are we home for Valentine's Day? Yes. Anything yes, planned? I am. Well, now I'm thinking of it, so yes. <laughs> I'm going to take my wife out to a lovely dinner. Romance. <laughs> I'm going to be Lance Romance. I'm going to do it up with some roses, some little red wine, you know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. Well, uh, we're going to play your latest single, Man Overboard. Any inside info you'd like to share? Yeah, one of your own. Uh, Danny Graves helped me write that one. The Man from The Watchman. Yeah, we were just sort of, you know, kicking around in my basement, and there you go. Well, Ian, thank you so much for coming on The Rock Report. Power 97 presents Thornley, Monday night at Silverado's. All right, man. Thanks for having me. All the interviews you want on iTunes and at Power97.com. Casey's Audio Vault. Casey Norman is Power 97's music director and can be heard every weekday from 2 till 6 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Power 97 is Winnipeg's best rock.